Welcome back guys, uh, we're back with another video. Um, I have covered this in the past doing a boss battle. Um, I've just got a slightly more, uh, well a bit more detailed boss battle to show you this time. And um, we'll go through with the commands as well just to show you what to do. Uh, so let's get started. So obviously you need an entrance, I've just done a sort of teleporting portal which says boss battle uh, with a few skulls on either side. So if we walk through here, it will take you into a lobby Obviously you need a lobby to start with and uh, get some more players in. Let me cover that up. Right, and I'll put a button. So um, yeah, to start, got no button means no game because what we do is we clear the button once the game is in progress and press button to start. So we're going to press the button. We've got a little pop-up thing on the left saying boss battle. These players are entering uh, with my name, whoever's in the area. And then your starting titles. Oh, yeah, no, it would help. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking over this earlier and I'll change the command block, so let me just do that myself. Right, so what you're going to find is it's going to put you... I can't actually see now. There we go. Right, so... Supposed to TP you there, I was doing a bit of maintenance as you can see. Get ready and it begins. Uh, we'll fast forward through this bit. And now we're back for the final round, and I just thought we'd see one, this one through, so I can sort of explain what's going on. As you can, well, as you have seen, we've got different entities spawning in from different angles, um, and you need to make it to the end of each round. At the end of each round, if there's any left, we kill the entities and then kill any items they drop, um, just to move on to the next round. So if we just wait for this one to finish, I've made this. I've, I've sped this up a little bit. I think we had the wrong message, so get ready, final round. Right, I think might, have, <laughs> might have had a bit of a mix up with the commands there. But anyway, yeah, so this is final round. Uh, you have a few waves in each round. I think I had two or three waves in each round. Can't remember now. Um, right, let's kill these off. 
I feel like I'm cheating here, I'm in creative, but again, I <laughs> wanted to show you otherwise. Uh, it's quite a hard one. Usually it needs a few players to actually get to the end, but there is a prize. I've done a prize of 10,000 coins if you get to the end. Uh, that's why it's hard. So you can see there, they've all died, and their items have uh, gone. And... There we go, and you have made it. I'm back into the lobby, and I'm 10,000 coins richer, so I'm up to 32 now. So that's pretty much um, how that one works. And let's just go through the commands for it. So first thing you're going to need to do is obviously you're going to need a lobby for them to actually come into. And what I've done here is this series. Um, I've put a tag on them first. I've tagged anybody uh, within the range of 10. Uh, and what I've done is so tag at A, so anybody um, in the range of 10 in the brackets, add, and then I've called it boss battle. It's important that you remember the names of what you call your um, tags because you don't want to forget them and forget a tag on someone. Um, also important to remove them so as they leave I'll explain it in a bit but as they leave they TP and they also remove tag but we'll get to that at the end oh, I missed one out there yes I have um, then we do a little message to anybody within the 15 uh, block radius so it's a say at a r equals 15 that's if you want it to say anybody's name within that radius and um, then I've put a message saying these players are entering the boss battle. No other players can join. That will pop up in the top left. Um, and then we put a title. Well, I've put a title. Again, th this is personal preference. This is just how I've done it. So I've put a title at A. Um, title again. So that comes up in the middle of your screen with a range of 15. Um, the game's about to begin. Um, if I'm going fast for any of these, just pause. Copy down the command if you want to copy it exactly. Um... And yeah, and then off to that, it's a title at A in the range of 20. Um, again, title, so it comes up in the middle of your screen and survive all the rounds. Um, these are chain unconditional, by the way, because I want them to work in a chain, as in one after another, and unconditional, so um, they just go and do... So we go through every block without a condition, like, you know, if, if he didn't have enough something, it might not go through, whereas it's unconditional, so it will. Anyway, so game's about to begin. Um, another title saying survive all the rounds again if you want to pause this and jot it down and um, there it is after that I set the spawn points so I set the spawn point in the lobby that's just in case they die in there you don't want them spawning wherever that area is because you usually tend to do it a bit further away from uh, where your sort of main spawn area so yeah I've changed the spawn point at P so the closest person or in fact I should probably change that at A um, within the vicinity um, and then we, we're going to do a set block air. The reason I've done a set block air is so the button isn't usable. So once these people go in here, this button disappears that was here. Um, so all you've got to do is get the coordinate that I'm stood on right now. Uh, so 202.95.387. Um, for you, it'll be whatever coordinate that is. If you put the button on the top and set that to air. Um, and this one I'll explain in a second, but it's a set block, and then the coordinate is at the start of the chain of commands um, where your actual mini game is, and that starts it all off. So that will be a chain unconditional, always active. Um, I've done set block. Uh, you'll obviously need your own coordinates, and then a red redstone block, and we'll get to that in a sec. And this one, of course, should be a chain unconditional, always active. Um, I've just changed it so I can just TP and show you guys. So TP at A in that range of 27 in square brackets and then uh, where you want them to start in the boss battle. Uh, I've done it in a specific place so when they land there they have to step on a pressure plate uh, which will then start the other stuff. Alright so if we just press that button just to take us through and this is where all the commands oh, these are where all the commands are they are just basically just on top so straight above here and all I'm doing is the sorry the coordinate that you're going to need is just here so at the start of your line of commands uh, this one's going to be a impulse one and you put a redstone here that hits here activates it and then starts off all the commands one after another this might seem a bit daunting so it's sort of long and snaky it's only because, um, I don't know, maybe I don't know myself, maybe there is another way, but I only know how to spawn one entity at a time. I don't know how to spawn groups. If anybody does, please leave it in the comments. I would uh, like to know, and it would make this a lot simpler. 
Um, so all I really need to show you here is the actual, the important ones like each stage and the timings because obviously you can spawn in whatever you like. So you've started in there. Let's come. Um, you've hit the pressure plate and the pressure plate. In fact, I don't know if I've done that. Let me just uh, let's have a look here. Oh yeah, so you don't actually even need this pressure plate, I've just realised, because um, it's, it sets it anyway, so after you leave the boss battle, it would have set the redstone. Um, I think I've done that just as an extra measure, just to have to add, so you don't have to add another tick zone, which is an area of which everything is being affected, um, just for lag, so I think that's why I've done that as well. So yeah, if you don't want to put it in the lobby commands, you can just put it where you actually TP to, you'll jump on that red block, and as you saw earlier, I'll go down on it, it'll start everything off and it'll start get ready. If go back to the commands. Right, so yeah, so by starting that block, you've put a redstone block there just for a sec. It's powered this, um, which has set the pressure plate block to air. So the pressure plate that I stood on, the reason it disappeared is because I've set it now to air. So redstone hit the command. Um, first command is to clear that pressure plate off so you don't keep restarting the game, it's only one start to it until it's finished. After that, I've put a title at A um, in the region of 100. You can make that more specific, of course, using X, Y, Z, and then DX, DY, DZ. However, that's just an easier version. And then title, uh, get ready. And obviously you can change that to whatever you like. All these blocks are all chain unconditional, always active. Um, I've then set this block to air, so the, the redstone that was there by the third command, I've set back to air again, so it won't just keep doing it basically, so this one here will then disappear ready for the next game. And I kill any entity apart from anything like, you know, a player, um, so I'll explain that actually, so kill at E brackets. And then if you want a specific type, as in if you want it to just kill a zombie, you'd put type equals zombie, whereas I've done it the other way around. I've put type equals uh, with an exclamation mark, which is not. So not player, type equals not a villager, type equals not an NCP, comma, R equals 100, so it's in the range of 100. Again, chain unconditional, always active. Um, and then we're killing any items on the ground. This is just in case anything's been left from the last battle. Um, it's just going to kill any items. It looks a lot better if you haven't got stuff just floating around. So what you're going to do then is you're going to start summoning in what you want. And um, what I done there is I just took, I think it was four corners or three corners. So I took the coordinates of, uh, block that. Up. I took the coordinates of here, I believe, sort of here, here, and here. So you've got your four random corners for them to spawn out of. And I basically just started summoning stuff, so summon zombie with that coordinate on a chain conditional, uh, unconditional, always active. Summon zombie, summon zombie, um, and they've all got a little bit of delay in. So a tick delay, I think the first ones I've done zero, and then the next zombie I've done 200 ticks, which is about 10 seconds. Again, you can sort of play with this yourself, how long or how hard you want it to be. You can change that to 100 seconds, so they're spawning in every five uh, sorry 200 100 ticks which would be every five seconds um, and then at the end of it what you want to do is a title at a um, with a range and i've put round one complete chain unconditional always active and again you need a bit of a delay in ticks here because otherwise what's going to happen is zombie will spawn wait a bit zombie will spawn wait a bit and then zombie will spawn and then it will be instantly the end of the round so at the end of the round you need to make sure that you've got a tick delay there that is the important one and again what i've done is just a series of kill any entities kill any items um, and then another title at a title get ready for round two so you'll you know you're taking them from one round to the next round etc um, title at A again, get ready, and then we start to spawn again, so we got, you know, spawn in that corner, spawn here, spawn here, um, and you can choose whatever you want to spawn in, basically, where have we got to, so as you can see, as the rounds increase, I've started spawning more stuff in, um, and the tick delays got slower, well, actually, there's no delay there, they just spawn in one in after another, 
And again, it's important for the next round just to make sure you've got a tick delay um, where it ends for the next round. So where would it end here? So it ends somewhere around here. So that's got a tick delay in as well, because what that means is you've spawned in all of these things and you need a little delay now for the player to actually kill them before it ends the round. I won't go through all of these, obviously, because all it is is just that um, over and over. So, you know, at the end of the round, it will it will kill the, the entities that are in the area. It will kill the items that are in the area. And then it will give you your title, you know, in the, in the middle of your screen, just saying round two complete and then moving you on to the next round. So that's pretty much it for that. Again, I'm not going to show you all of these because that's just, it's the same thing over and over. Um, and it depends how many rounds you want and adding in entities as you go. And then the ending bit, which is quite important. So you've got to the end now, you've done however many rounds you want. Um, and there you go. So you spawn in your, your last entity. Um, again, you might not have any tick delays. You might want it spawning in quite fast one after another to make it hard for the player. But anyway, so to finish off, again, you kill the entity. Um, again, if you want to pause that and just jot it down, please do. I won't be stopping too long on each block. Um, kill the item again. It's important to put a range on these things. You don't want to kill everything in the whole world, <laughs> obviously. Um, and for the prize, so I've done a prize of 10,000. <clears> um, and my scoreboard's called Coins. Yours might be different, but if you're using coins, you do a scoreboard player's add at A, and then the brackets, because I only want it to be in the range of 100. I don't want everybody in the level getting uh, 10,000 coins. Close the brackets, and then coins, and then the amount that you want to give them. So that will give anybody within that vicinity 10,000 coins. And a title to say, well done, you've made it. And we set block wooden pressure plate, so we... Oh, apparently it got me. Whoa. That's a little crazy. Whoa. Something a bit crazy is going on here for sure, can't you? I can see through my lobby. What? I mean, this is an old game, which I did. we did have a few problems. You can actually see into my little bunker there. That's my... Anyway, right, back to the game. So I'll TP myself back. I think that's it hit the end of the round there. And uh, when it hits the end of the round, it TPs everybody back. So if we go back here, da, 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 da. yeah, well done, you've made it. Um, we restore the pressure plate that was down there for the next game. So as you can see, the pressure plate's back again. And then we TP whoever is in this area right here or 100 blocks of, uh, we TP them back to the lobby. Right, one thing I did do, of course, change the game mode. So this one, I've just done game mode A at A. I've excluded uh, me and my other account. And then I've put a comma and I've put the exact coordinates. So X, Y, Z, I've got them coordinates and then DX, DY, DZ. I won't go into that now. Um, I've done a few videos where I've explained how to do that sort of uh, radius. So that will change everybody in there uh, to uh, not to survival to adventure and then I've put a mining fatigue on there so effect at A and I've put that exact coordinate again mining fatigue um, and that will keep everybody in there from being able to break the blocks obviously you get to the end um, let me change that over to take me back again don't want to be stuck here right now we're back into the extremely glitchy lobby where you can see completely through now. Wow. Anyway, so <laughs> right, if I take this one away, and so what I've done to exit, which I should have actually done the other way around, please do this the other way around. So rather than having the TP under the box, uh, under the block, you should first of all have uh, tag at P remove boss battle. So anybody that hits that to get um, to TP out of the room will get their tag removed. Therefore, you know, they won't get called into any other games if anybody presses the button. And that will, in fact, be an impulse, unconditional, um, these redstone. And it will then go to 
this block which is a TP at P and then wherever you want them to TP out to um, from the lobby again just switch these around please and yeah start off with an impulse and go to a chain so if I hit this button that'll take me back to spawn again so thanks for bearing with guys I know that was a bit of a long one um, I hope I didn't rush through some bits too much but I wanted to try and get that included so I thought I'd actually lost this world and I managed to get a lot of it back so I've actually got some more footage to come because um, I've done a lot of building on this it's just yeah I thought I'd lost it and we still have it and it, it sort of works a bit glitchy but it does sort of work so thanks for watching guys uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you really liked it thank you bye bye <laughs>